The activities in this program are dangerous and being performed by professionals in a controlled environment. We don't recommend that anyone try this at home. It's a journey into the unknown. Six of Australia's fittest athletes on a two-week road trip. Come on, mate. Push, push, push. They are Ironmen, masters of the surf. But now they face challenges that will take them out of their comfort zones in ways they've never known. Oh, bro. <laughs> Can't oh. that good. From day to day, they aren't told what lies ahead. We came to party, we came to race, so let's do this. Last time, it was jump first, think later, as the Ironmen took the plunge in a rock run swim. That's eerie. Olympian Kai Hurst won his second challenge in a row. He just knows the water, mate. He knows what he's doing. Today, can he make it a three-peat? I'm not getting ahead of myself here, so two from two is fantastic. Or will a start before sunrise catch him napping in a race where the finish isn't the only line offering a prize? Who will be the champion of deep water? Another day and more surprises in store for the Ironmen. But for the moment, the boys aren't heading for a challenge. Hey, cowboy! <laughs> we requested to get a couple of two-wheelers, but uh, that got denied pretty quick. I've not ridden too many four wheels. I've only ridden lifeguarding and stuff like that, but never out on the sand dunes. And just the power that you know you've got at your hand, and it's just it's just something that you don't get in the sport that I do. And it's a lot like the surf, where you you know your limit and you sort of want to push that next level, but at the same time you've got to be careful. While some, like Kendrick and Kai, take to the quad bikes no worries, it's not the same for Pooley. He already has three stitches in his foot from Challenge One. And now, there's something else to slow him down. Oh, I think I was the only one that got bogged, actually. I was sort of watching everyone just take off out of the sand and started to give it some a little bit early. And before I knew it, the, the bottom had bottomed out completely. And I don't even think the wheels were touching the sand. All I was doing was throwing up this little sandstorm on top of myself. Ah, it's just flicking sand on me. Matt Poole is one of the most popular competitors in his sport. I was never really pushed into the sport. It's just a love for the ocean and, and always wanting to be down the beach and, and in the water. He's in front of Ellie Day. Look at him. Matty Paul from nowhere. This is where it all began. This is a photo of DY Beach, which is literally just down the road for me. I guess I had sort of an athletic sort of drive. I was always quite a competitive child. I played all sports and one of the sports I loved from, from winter at a young age was playing footy, so I grew up playing NRL and I've always been a Mad Manly fan. I got to around 16, 17, I had to make that choice where you can't do everything as much as you want to and I chose sort of surf lifesaving and Ironman racing, so everything else pretty much took a back seat. For me, it's everything I sort of enjoy doing. I love being at the beach. I love being fit and healthy. And I get to go around Australia competing in a professional Ironman series with some pretty cool guys. His philosophy is simple. Have a go and always enjoy it. Oh, nailed it. I worked hard. I moved to the Sunshine Coast. And in my five years in the professional series, I've had a runner-up in the series a 
third in the series, and I've also had a few blowout years as well. Now, just to the bottom of the screen, there is Matty Paul. He loses it. Oh, he gets belted at the skis from 10 foot in the air. It's just racing in our sport. You know, sometimes things go right, other times it can go horribly wrong. He's saying, he where's snapped. the ski? And look at that. It's that snapped. is absolutely... Oh, no. I enjoy fear. I embrace fear. You know, with fear comes adrenaline. You've got to think when you're challenging yourself and you're pushing yourself and you're putting yourself in the sport and the lifestyle that we do, fear's one of your best friends. You know, the beauty of our sport is we often do have our backs up against the wall, you know. You've got to push hard, you've got to push fast and you've got to beat the guy beside you. So if you're hurting, you're, you're in a world of trouble. When your back's up against the wall, you just got to grit your teeth and, and fight it out. For a guy who's used to having his ups and downs, hopefully there's now only one way to go. Yours up, man. All right, let's go. Winning. We've teamwork. Maybe. Oh, it's really reversed. <laughs> Up next, the fun is over. Yeah, I won't be their most favourite person at the finish. When there's no chance of getting help from anyone. Early start today, I've got 4.45 to get out on the boat. Feeling a bit better, foot's still pretty sore. 4.54, ready to go. Gotta go get some brekkie at five o'clock and then we'll meet at the wharf at 5.30. I think we're going fishing. So I got a hook stuck in my head when I was a kid. Once, when I was fishing, I'm like whipping it. No good. A few rules, boys, don't put a hook in your finger or fall overboard, all right? And we don't have any bananas packed, do we? No bananas, bad luck. See secure on the door, see that? Don't listen to any whinging wire out there, mate. Let's get some fish. <laughs> I just feel like I need to go to sleep. <laughs> but there's no chance of sleep at all. A challenge is waiting, and it will wake everyone in a hurry. We've got some rods and a lot of bait, so hopefully we'll be fishing for a fair bit and then we'll see what we have in store, but I've honestly got no idea. I don't know what today's got in store. I don't know whether this is a fishing challenge or whether we're fishing for a few hours. It's cold and windy and we got up early, so I'm hoping the, uh, the early start pays its, pays its weight in fish. I hope we we'll get the first one. Really hope we we'll get the first one. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. He's caught me! Oh, you're on cannon! Oh, he's on cannon! Go, Rex! Go, Rex! <laughs> Done this before. <laughs> That's a good fish. Going to something big here. <laughs> Best on board, apparently. So, absolutely stoked. Righto, boys, gather around. So, have you enjoyed your fishing? Very good. The fishing is over. Hope you enjoyed it, because the challenge is about to start. I'd caught nice big coral trout, probably like something like that. And then all of a sudden Zappa goes, all right boys, we're not just out here for fishing. Wes will be coming out on a jet ski. I saw on the roof of the boat that uh, there were boards up there. Oh, real? What? Straight away we we're just like, ah, oh, this is going to suck. Welcome to Lost at Sea. The Ironmen face a seven kilometre paddle into 30 knot headwinds. Once ashore, they'll need to put on flippers, swim to a sunken chest, and each collect a six kilogram weight before heading back to the beach and finishing with a short run. The start is staggered at two minute intervals. So boys, you're gonna draw your number out. This will be the order in which you leave for the challenge. Number one, Donnie. Always put the youngest first, they get eaten first. Yeah, that certainly took them by surprise and uh, they weren't happy about it. It's howling. 
and it's offshore, and we're starting offshore. All the boys seem to think this is right up my alley just after doing Molokai, but haven't paddled one of these clubby 10 foot six boards in a while, and it's a little bit bumpy out there, so. Clear favourite. Clear favourite. Yeah. Clear favourite over here. Straight from Molokai. Yeah, uh, we'll see. Put the grommy in first, so he gets eaten first, so see what happens. Okay, ready? I didn't know whether to really to cut straight for where, the point of where we were going or whether to go straight into shore and then run along the coast. Oh, man, I think he's going backwards. I don't think that's going to work for Tanner, heading straight in and going down. I think he's got to try and go as the crow flies and keep heading back against the wind, but that's my call. We knew it was going to be a battle. It was 7k from the where the boat was back to the, the bay here. I kind of went for the more brutal attack and I was going to cop more wind, more open, but I was still going to get a little bit more run of the ocean. We just had this wicked westerly. We've got this southerly swell. Just a really bad scenario for a paddle and downwinder. <laughs> The initial point when you jumped in, it was had all that wind. So you went from being able to see what you were doing to just straight away not seeing anything and just paddling. There won't be any assistance from the ocean, um, you know, just re resistance. So, you know, it's going to be extremely tough for them. Yeah, I won't be their most favourite person at the finish. It's a gruelling event. And in the middle of it, the finish line just doesn't seem to be getting any closer. The vast Western Australian coast and six of Australia's leading Ironmen racing for shore in a time trial. It began as a fishing trip, but now is a battle of the mind. And mentally, it's just not right to jump off a boat and paddle back to shore. It's just not something you normally do. So, you know, that was certainly something they had to overcome. It's a long way on a board, and you can pretty much see the finish line from the whole way. But it just does not look like it's getting closer. So you sort of got to take your mind off it for 15 minutes or so, and then have a look, and then say, oh, OK, I actually got a bit closer. I might try to maybe do 50 strokes on my knees and then 50 strokes on my tummy, and then um, swap that around, maybe 60 and 60. So I'm always counting and, and keep my mind active. You don't sort of want to just get distracted on where everyone else is, because it's just going to throw you off your sort of your race. But at the same time, you sort of, in the back of your mind, you're like, oh, I wonder if I've caught anyone or stuff like that, but I couldn't see anyone the whole way. Well, they're about 90% of the way through the board race now, and I think you'll find that their heart rate's probably sitting about 190, 200. The aerobic threshold's about 150 beats per minute, but I think they're well exceeding that, and I think you'll find that uh, the lactic acid was starting to build up in the arms and the legs. I think today's challenge is probably one of the tricky ones because they don't get to see the course. To be told a course verbally rather than visually is somewhat different and when they come to the beach having to listen to instructions verbally from me to where how to get around the course and negotiate. Come on, Paulie! Good man, good man. Take your board up over the road and then you run straight up around the buoy. Come on, Paulie, let's go! Come on! Goes the stitches. 
about a K to go, I saw Tannen and he went six minutes in front of me. So I thought, you know, I'll probably be going pretty well. He's pulling in front of me and then um, Shannon to my left hand side and I was like, oh no. So straight away I was sort of fell on the back foot. So big rookie error for me. Just completely stuffed up with, the, with his line and the tactic that he took. Once he got out there to dive down, pick up the weight and then come back up. I remember just swimming back up and I knew that you can't drop that weight. If you have to double dive, it's just going to cost you too much time. Take your boards up to the road. Take your boards up to the road. Did the transition. Transition was hell hard and soft sand. Just jumped off the board. Just legs are a bit jelly because you haven't walked on them at all or done anything with them really. Swim out, dive down, grab the weight, swim back. You must complete the course with the weight and the fins. Drop your plate in the, in the rings and you're done. Stop the clock. I basically finished and was trying to just keep track of everyone and I thought me and Shannon were close. The weight in the water was um, a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be. Uh, lucky we had fins on to, to get down there. I, I grabbed it once and it slipped. I thought, do I go back to the surface or, or stay down there? But I stayed down there, got it again, um, got back up, put it in my vest. Um, the vest filled up with water, which made swimming pretty hard. Dive down, grab the plate. Had a little bit of a tactic, put the finger through the hole and used it sort of like as a, a body surfing plane in a way. Man, the run around, oh my God. Just probably just as hard as running up that hill in the first challenge. My legs just wouldn't move. I was just sitting there going, oh. <laughs> I was just super jelly. Uh, got in the water, I felt at home again. Come on, push, push, push. Around the crab bottom down. Here comes Kane. I think Kane left last. It was super tough. No, I, I found it pretty tough out there. Board up over the road. Transition straight up front of us. Turn right. At the end of a paddle, you know, your arms are lactated, your heart rate's up, your breathing's quite short. and. You know, it's hard to get a good breath. And when that happens also, you'll find that um, it makes their thoughts a lot slower as well, a lot more muddled, and uh, yeah, things just get a lot harder. It wasn't, it wasn't all that far out, out to the chest, but I got out, got out there and it was probably a lot deeper than I thought it was gonna be. And I swam down and as I've gone to pick it up, I wasn't sure what sort of plates they were going to be and they were, they were both lapped over each other so I went down and grabbed it and as I've come up they've sort of slip, like two slipped out. So I had to swim back up and go, go for another gasp of air. It's a lot harder than you know what you actually think it is. the final stages of Lost at Sea. After a seven kilometre paddle, the Ironmen face a lung-busting dive to collect a six kilogram weight and head to the finish in a time trial. And I swam down and as I've gone to pick it up, they've sort of slip, like two slipped out. Cause then I had to swim back up and go, go for another gasp of air. But I think I lost a bit of, a little bit of time there, but over a 50, 45, 50 minute paddle, I don't think, is a, is a whole lot to lose. Kendrick's gone one arm. Kai and Shannon stuck the weight up their vest. Matt swam with it one arm, so be interesting to see what Kane does. Take your fin, say that's it, go, go, go. I sort of said to Shannon before, I said oh, if, the, if the weight's small, I'll probably put it under my vest and um, swim like that. Just the whole vest filled up with water. You're like a sumo. It's way faster. It's, it's, it's quite cool, actually, the different techniques that the boys have got. So Kendrick will finish off now. He'll go around, come down, drop his weight, stop his clock. One more to go. We've just got Kane to finish off now. 
All the boys are in. Kane was the last to leave off the boat, so I think that's an advantage personally if I was in the race because if you were last, you get to kind of follow the guys, but also got someone to chase. Take your fins, yep, fins. Save transition, Kane. Take the fins with you. Run all the way around and drop it over into the rings. I think they all handled it really, really well. Um, they all kind of really concentrated on what I was saying when they did it, but it was a really hard paddle. The wind was in their face. They couldn't really tell who was in the lead. And that's really what we were like, aiming to do, to give them that uncertainty of where they're coming and what, how they're going. Well, boys, welcome back ashore. Lost at Sea challenge number three has been complete. Before I tell you the result, let's make it a little bit interesting. Pooley, who do you think you won? It's hard to say. Um, yeah. I think Shannon got it. I reckon he did, yeah, and I reckon it might have been close between me and Kane for second and third. Shannon looked like he was flying, so I'd almost have to say Shannon and Pooley. So, Shannon, do you feel that you won today? Um, I think I've got everyone covered except maybe Pooley, so I started four minutes behind him. Uh, I was probably just putting my flippers on when he'd finished, so whether that's swim and, and runs, four minutes, I'm, I'm not sure. I can't tell you all the results, but as we have agreed on, I can tell you who the winner is. And the winner of today's challenge, Lost at Sea challenge number three, is Shannon Eckstein. So, well done, Shannon. Well, boys, challenge number three done. If you think that was tough, we've got a lot more scarier, tougher challenge ahead of you. So rest up, refuel, get ready. Tomorrow's another big day. Germans, cats of the day, cold trout. Oh, How sad. Beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? Well, that yeah. The yeah. best fish of your option. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, you Good job. Good job. Good Do you want the other one out of the way? Next week, our city slicker Ironmen are swept out of their comfort zones. I'm not an adventurer, I'm an Ironman. And into a land where just one wrong turn can end in disaster. To be honest, I've never seen this before, ever. There will be no shortage of pain. Next week on Deep Water. That was a major fail. <laughs>